What is up, Corkies? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Flare Pro 2 Espresso Maker. It is a lever action manual espresso maker. And I'm going to be showing you how I use it, how I uh, pull shots with it, uh, the pros and cons to it, and if it's the right kind of espresso maker for you, because it really isn't for everyone, but it is excellent for certain people. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to CorkandJava.com, your go-to place for coffee and wine reviews and how-tos. On this channel, we like to expand and enrich your experience with all of your favorite beverages through wine and coffee reviews and how-tos. So if that sounds interesting, smash that subscribe button down below. Well, don't just click it and hit the little bell too so you're notified when all of our future videos come out. So, like I mentioned before, we are taking a look at the Flare Pro 2 Espresso Maker. It probably looks very different than the normal espresso machine you're used to seeing, but I'll tell you one thing. Uh, if you're looking for really high quality espresso, but you don't want to pay out the bank for a really expensive, talking minimum $500 to $1,000 machine, then this could be a great option. But there are some downsides that uh, make it so it might not be right for everyone. So let me kind of go over how I use it um, when I'm making shots of espresso and I'll go over the features that it, it comes with and then we'll go from there giving you pros, cons, and my final thoughts on the Flare Pro 2. So first thing is price. It comes in at around the $300 price point. And so that is cheaper than a lot of espresso machines, but you might be thinking, well, it's manual, so obviously it should be a lot cheaper. And yes, that is where you get a lot of the savings from it. But also a pro to that is there's a lot less maintenance, a lot less cleaning, and there's just a lot less that could go wrong from an equipment standpoint. Um, which is one of the cons that I, I kind of liked about it. And that's also why I got a manual grinder as well. I really like uh, just the cost benefit analysis. Yeah, you gotta put a little more work into it, but you can get quality grinds for way cheaper. And that's the same thing here. You can get a very quality shot of espresso uh, at a very affordable price. So, First thing, and this is a difference from a normal espresso machine, there's obviously nothing making hot water in this, so you have to boil your own water. And also, um, you need to preheat this uh, chamber right here, and it comes with a little rubber seal, so you can put it right there in the bottom, put it next to your sink, Fill it with boiling water. I usually do two uh, different preheats with this just to make sure it's really good and hot because this is very thick stainless steel and it just, that's an attested the quality of this really. And you gotta make sure you pour all that water out before you're doing your, your brew. Normally while my water is heating up, I'm measuring the dosage of beans for the shot. And I usually go for about 17 grams of espresso. And like I said, I grind with uh, a Lido 3 grinder. And we do a review of this grinder um, as well. It's a very quality, uh, high quality hand grinder that you're gonna get really good consistent grinds uh, for a lot cheaper than what an electric burr grinder would cost for the same quality. So this is the brew basket that it comes with. It's uh, upgraded from previous models and it's got the same screen in it that uh, high quality uh, electric uh, machines have. So it's a very good quality um, piece of equipment right there. And of course it comes with the pressure gauge so you can see what pressure you're doing. Uh, you can do all sorts of really cool um, pressure fluctuations. After I've ground uh, my coffee beans, 
Uh, it comes with a little funnel thing that it fits right on the uh, porta filter right there, and it makes it very easy to pour your coffee into the porta filter. Got a really nice, hefty stainless steel tamp as well, which is something that a lot of low end espresso machines and espresso kits uh, don't come with. A lot of times they're just cheap plastic things, but this is a nice hefty one that uh, you really don't have to add much pressure. Um, you just wanna get a nice level bed. After you're set with tamping, there's a screen dispersion that you wanna definitely make sure you don't forget on top of your puck. Trust me, I forgot this thing once and it was just spurt city coming out the bottom. It was awful wasted uh, shot there. All right, so after you got your coffee all prepped and ready to go, make sure you're emptying back out the, uh, the chamber for the water to go into so you can add fresh water. I usually go around 200, maybe up to 205 degree water because I know it's still gonna lose a little bit of heat uh, in the brew chamber. All right, and once you got your hot brew chamber up there, you fill it up to uh, the lip there with your hot water. You put your gauge in place. And what I like to do is about a 25 to 30 second pre-infusion, which means just pulling down to about one bar of pressure. And it really saturates the the grounds with the hot water and ensures a lot more even extraction than if you were gonna go right straight up to uh, uh, a lot of pressure. And after that, uh, about 30 seconds, I like to go around six to seven bars of pressure for my shot, which draws it out if you're dialing it in about 45 seconds to maybe a minute is, is kind of where I've noticed uh, the best results. And what I mean by best results is a cup that's not sour, um, meaning under extracted, and it's not bitter, meaning over extracted. It just hits that nice sweet spot. You get a lot of the, the great notes that you're supposed to get in that coffee. And I'm hitting those uh, times pretty much every time. I would show you uh, me using the timer, but I was filming making the shot with my camera, which is also what I use for my timer. So obviously I can't show you that. All right, so let's go over a few pros of this and a few cons, and I will give you my final thoughts on whether, uh, what type of person this would be a great fit for and what type of person might wanna pass with this and go with something else. First pro is just the, the quality of coffee you get for the price. Um, it's really hard to beat this. Uh, this is putting out professional level shots. And another pro about it is you can get very, very picky about pressure profiling, pre-infusion. You can really nerd out and make this exactly how you want it. Another pro is it's just really high quality build. And like I said, I mean, look at, Look at these, it even comes with like stainless steel uh, drip tray here in two pieces. You got a super thick, strong uh, hunk of metal here. I mean, this stuff is as sturdy as it comes. There's not a flimsy piece on this entire machine here. And uh, that's just gonna lead me to the pro of it's just less maintenance and less mechanically things to go wrong. Uh, as well as the pro of all these parts are replaceable independently, super easy. Let's say, you know, a seal goes out on something, it's really easy to swap for an O-ring. Let's say, you, I, mean, I don't know, I don't even know how you would damage half of this stuff. Let's say the lever broke in half. I mean, you could probably buy that separately and it's, it's just a lot less to go wrong than a very expensive espresso machine where you have to deal with you know, making sure that you're not having mineral deposits in the boilers. I mean, there's a million things that can go wrong electronically and mechanically and uh, in the fluid systems of a normal espresso machine. If you want simplicity, this is the way to go. 
All right, now let's get into a few cons. One of the cons is you're gonna need a very high quality grinder to get any kind of decent results with this. It doesn't have a pressurized porta filter. So even if you're going with like some mid-range grinders like um, the Barazza, like Encore, uh, you might be able to get by with that, but I would say it's a little bit of a risk. Um, if you're going with uh, like a Barazza Sete, you could definitely uh, go with this. Or if you have a high quality hand grinder like my Lido 3, you can get away with it. But if you are uh, someone that's really budget with their grinders, uh, then you're going to want to invest in a nice grinder before you invest in the Flare Pro 2. But they do have a new Flare, I think, signature Neo model, which the Porta filter basket um, is designed in a way where you can use uh, lower quality grinders with it. It's not going to be as professional grade shots as this would be, but it gets you through with not needing to invest in a grinder and pay around $300 for the espresso maker as well. Another con is it takes a little bit longer to make your shot than it would a normal espresso machine where the water's boiling up fast, it's doing pretty much everything automatic. Uh, this, you gotta boil your water separately and you have to really control every step of the process. So uh, there's a lot of room for error with this as well. If you're new to espresso, you might get frustrated at first trying to dial in shots and just not going the way that you want it to. But a pro is it's a really good learning tool and you can learn all about the different pressure profiles that uh, you want to try an experiment with that just really isn't available on a lot of mid-tier to low-end espresso machines that are electronic. All right, so my final thoughts are this is a great machine or great, I don't know, I guess machine for uh, someone that is looking to really be dedicated to learning the art of espresso and they want to have that control over all the aspects, really get to play with different pressures, different water temperatures, uh, all sorts of variations and variables and just really learn the art of espresso. This is a great learning tool and it's a great way to learn um, just how espresso works. I also recommend this for someone that's, you know, on a budget and looking to make espresso for a lot cheaper than it would if you're buying like a high-end thousand dollar machine. Although if you're a big latte person and the foamed milk and steamed milk is really important to you, obviously this has none of that in it. You're going to have to invest in doing that separately. Uh, either on your stove or other methods to steam milk. So that might not be a deal breaker for you. Um, I'm not a big latte fan. I'll just drink my espresso up straight. So uh, that was definitely not a deal breaker for me at all. Also, if you're someone that's not looking to, you know, really invest in a high-end grinder and you're just, you know, I just want my espresso in the morning. I want it simple and easy and as hassle-free as possible. This might not be the device for you either. I absolutely love my Flare Pro 2 and I would like to know in the comments down below if you're in the market for this product, what are some of the features and stuff that you like about it and what are some of the things that uh, maybe they can improve upon. Uh, I'd like to know down in the comments below and what kind of espresso drinks do you like to make or enjoy at you know different cafes? Uh, I'd like to know in the comments down below as well. All right, guys, make sure you give us a thumbs up if you like this content. It just helps the YouTube algorithm and helps us grow our channel. So um, also you can find us online. We got a Facebook group, a Twitter, a Pinterest, and an Instagram. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys online. So until next time, bottoms up.